uh, five minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Nice looking Thursday morning. Our next guest has been a guest with us before. Solange Ritchie is on the phone. She is an outstanding author. She's got a new thriller novel called The Burning Man. But besides that, listen to this. Her credentials include being a trial attorney known as the case saver. She serves on numerous charities and legal boards. She's a philanthropist and alumni from the University of Florida, and I know we reached that school, so they're they're cheering right now, I guess, <laughs> once we're in class. Uh, and she's in, uh, going to be at a book signing up in Gainesville on Saturday, this coming Saturday, the 21st, at noon at Books A Million in the uh, West Newberry Road location, and then another book signing on Monday, the 23rd, at 7 p.m. at the Alachua County Library Book Talk at the headquarters branch on East University Avenue. Solange Richie, good morning, Solange. How you doing? Good morning, Larry. I'm fine. How are you? Good. Where do you live? Where, where are you calling from, anyway? I'm calling right now from um, Pembroke Pines in Florida, and I'm actually um, in the process of selling, well, I've sold my home in California, and I'm moving to Florida shortly. Is that right? So uh, so you're here now, uh, yeah. but th- that's just to like, tie up some loose ends or something? Yes, I um, I go back next Thursday. My house is sold. I have the estate people at my house right now, pricing furniture, and I'm going to make the huge cross country move um, first week of June. Have you been torn between two coasts the entire time you were out in California? <laughs> No, um, well, yes, actually, in a way, because my parents are, are in Florida, and I have a lot of relatives in both in Florida and in Jamaica, where I'm originally from. So, yeah, there's been a little bit of back and forth. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, I'm excited to make the big move and have kept co- contact with a lot of my, my Florida and, and Gainesville friends. So, yeah, it'll be a fresh, a fresh start for me. So you get to you get to meet some of your fans. When did when did uh, the Burning Man come out? I know we we looked at this book a long time ago. What when did the book yeah. come out? The the book officially launched on September the fifteenth, twenty fifteen. But it was actually out on Amazon a little ahead of that. Um, so yeah, it's been out. You know, it's been out for a little while, and we're continuing to get traction with it. So very excited about that. And to remind me, is this part of a uh, of a series or is this a standalone book right now? Right now, it's a standalone, but I have written a second, third, and fourth behind it, and um, so yeah, it'll be part of a series. And uh, my lead character will be coming back to solve additional crimes in the future. And how fun is that for you as a as an author to have a character that has become part of you? Well, I absolutely love it. I feel like uh, my lead character, Doctor Catherine Towers, is my best friend, and. Um, not only that, I feel like her little son is my best friend's son. So it's very exciting to have a character that you can grow with and, um, you know, that continues to inspire that creativity. As, as an attorney, did you have um, did you have enough? Okay, how do I do this? How do I ask this question? As an attorney, did you know what a detective would do? Did you know what, um, what, what Catherine Powers would be doing? Um, to some extent, yes, because I think as a lawyer, especially the type of law that I did, you, you naturally are a, a very inquisitive mind and a, you have that kind of detective mentality. Um, but to prepare for the book, I did a lot of uh, research. I interviewed a uh, forensic pathologist. I did a tour of the, the Orange County um, Jail and also the morgue and got to see their autopsy rooms as well as the... Uh, for lack of a better word, refrigerator rooms that they keep bodies in. Oh, man. So there wow. was a lot of, yeah, um, I, can, I can tell you firsthand that uh, the first, first time you see a body that's been hit by a train, you'll never forget it. Um, I don't ever want to see that. Uh-uh. Yeah, it, it was, there wasn't a lot left, let's put it that way. Mm. Um, but anyway, so yeah, there was a lot of research, um, a lot of interviews. Uh, we, I'm very fortunate in Orange County to have a a friend who's a former very high-ranking um, Orange County Sheriff's Office official mm. um, who's worked on the force for many, many years, you know, got to see a personal tour of stuff we never saw at 9-11 and that kind of thing. So, wow. yeah, uh, research. Give, 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 if I want to be fair to the book, but I also I'm just so intrigued by what, we, what you do and where everything comes from uh, that, we, yeah. that ends up in the pages of the book. But give us a, a movie trailer version of the, the Burning Man. 
Well, the, the story of the Burning Man is interesting because it comes out of two, actually two real life cases that one in Florida and one in the Midwest, um, as far as the, uh, the serial killer. But basically, it's the story of Dr. Catherine Powers. She's a 38 year old forensic pathologist who's also an FBI agent who's literally at the top of her game. She is called in to deal with the worst of the worst criminal minds and criminal cases. And um, in this particular book, she's called in to deal with a, a serial killer who kills uh, young women in a very um, graphic way. And uh, as she gets closer to finding out who he is, he pulls her into his web of lies and deceit and um, basically comes after her. Um, and I won't give you any more than that because that'll spoil the book. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you have really taken the uh, uh, crime solar novel to a, a new letter uh, le- level because sometimes people will read the story and halfway through they know who did it and you keep everything close to the vest. Yes. Yes, and I like I like doing that. I, I think that's part of being a good writer is not only, you know, being able to draw the reader in, but kind of, you know, what, one of the things as a writer that you can do that really blows it as far as your credibility is to um, to, to 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 do too many red herrings, and so I, you know, I really try not to do that um, because that you lose your credibility and you lose your integrity. But I really enjoy the um, the suspense writing part of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, unlike most writers, I mean, a lot of writers will plot out their story from the very beginning, and I don't do that. I I always have my beginning in mind, and I always have my ending in mind, and then in the middle is where all the fun research comes into play, and the characters really speak to you, and you kind of let the story develop on its own. And at the whole, at the end, hopefully your editor reads it and says, yes, this makes logical sense, and we can run with it. So... Um, do, do, when you when you're working from t- a couple of real stories, as you mentioned earlier, d- d- if those stories don't have the, the 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 elements that you need in a novel, in other words, the twists, the unexpected uh, events, do you um, let's see? D- do you have to be true to the story, or as a novelist, do you not worry about that? Do, I mean, the, 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 tr- the true the uh, the true story that it's based on. I mean. Yeah, the, the true stories I, I use as kind of a as a starting point. I don't I don't really follow the true stories because you know usually with the true stories the person gets uh, gets caught and is is put away for a pretty long time or put on death row. Um, so I, I use those kind of as more of a, a inception piece um, as a story thought, and then the the real the story in the book develops on its own. So uh-huh, uh-huh. I usually use I use those as um, just kind of a, a, a you know a kernel of uh, of corn to, to just kind of grow in my mind and and um, so yeah I don't really follow the true life the true life stuff. Well, you do you do focus on the family in your story because your uh, um, heroine just isn't like a a, a, a single super girl with no family ties. Yes, yes, and that was purposeful. Um, because I'm a trial lawyer and a female trial lawyer, um, you know, even though I don't have uh, I don't have kids of my own, I have four stepchildren and multiple step grandchildren, and I can tell you from speaking to my female trial attorney friends as well as other professional women, it's always very difficult, you know, to leave your uh, your family and kind of focus on your career for an, any extended period of time, especially when you're in trial. You know, you may be in trial for two months in a jurisdiction that's away from your family, and so you've got to deal with, you know, how do you balance all of that? Yeah, yeah. And so I wanted that to be integral to Catherine's character um, well, as far as what she deals with. And I think as readers, we enjoy when there's a little character development. If it's if the character is just one-dimensional, I, I don't think we embrace the character. It, it's, more, it's, it's important to us to know that they're, okay, um, I don't know. I can't think of a character offhand, but any character really. If you if you embrace a character, chances are you get what they do for a living. But then you also have fun watching how they interact with their daughters, their sons, their mm-hmm. their mothers, and other people in their lives who have nothing really to do with the case that you're writing about. Yes, de- definitely. I mean, I, I when you write a character, you can't really write as a good writer. You can't write a flat character, and that, that's one of the reasons that I wrote Catherine. Is I got 
you know, I read a lot in this genre. It's my favorite genre to read in the thriller, mystery, crime genre, and, and even the true crime stuff. And um, I, guess I got tired of reading kind of the, the stereotypical, you know, ex-military Joe Schmo detective male characters. And so that's one of the reasons that I wrote um, the character of Dr. Catherine Powers is I wanted a strong female mm-hmm. lead, but I also wanted her to have this, you know, these work-life balance issues. And um, the other interesting thing that kind of, I didn't really think about it, but kind of came out, and readers have picked up on this, is um, the fact that when she's under extreme stress, she has a slight uh, ESP capability that comes into her solving crime. So that, that kind of came out of the blue. And um, readers really seem to love that and kind of want to know more about where that comes from. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, We are up against our first break, so let's take that break, but we will return and continue talking to you, Solange. Solange Ritchie is on the phone, and once again, she will be signing uh, books and speaking uh, this coming Saturday at the Books A Million in Gainesville on West Newbury Road. That'll be at noon. And then on Monday, the 23rd, at the Alachua County Library Book uh, Headquarters branch on East University Avenue. We'll take a little break and be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For this Thursday, times of clouds and sun with a shower or thunderstorm in the morning and a couple of heavier showers and thunderstorms this afternoon and early tonight, the high today, 83 to 87. Hardly cloudy late Thursday night, lows 69 to 73. For Friday, clouds and some sunshine with a shower and heavy thunderstorm or two in the afternoon, high 86 to 90. Saturday, variable cloudiness with a shower and thunderstorm or two, highs in the 80s. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Bunberg. The sound of the bat cracking, the crowd cheering, the smell of overpriced but tasty hot dogs, the memories that will last a lifetime of your first baseball game with Little Johnny. Your team wins. It was a great night until you get home. It's 9 p.m. and your wife says you have no water. We have no water. What do you do? What do you do? Rule number one, don't panic. Remain calm. Okay, that's two rules. We don't have time for jokes, funny man. Okay, think back. On the way home, you heard a radio commercial. Mike Scott Plumbing. If water runs through it, we do it. Eureka. You saved the day. You remembered that Mike Scott Plumbing doesn't charge extra for nights, weekends, or holidays. You are a genius. Hey, Mr. Genius, did you remember the phone number? Of course you did. Remember, you're a genius. 352-237-2888. Because at Mike Scott Plumbing, if water runs through it, we do it. Even if water's not running through it at this particular moment. Mike Scott Plumbing. The Five Points of Life Foundation is hosting a golf scramble at Adena in Ocala Friday, May 20th. So get your foursome together and take part in this high-class event at the best and most exclusive golf course in the Southeast. Limited space is available, so visit fivepointsoflife.org or call 352-224-1728 to register your team today. Life South Community Blood Centers. This incredible tournament boasts one of the best player gift packages in the area. The Five Points of Life Golf Tournament, Friday, May 20th at Adena. The Five Points of Life, creating the donation generation. Palm Garden wants to get to the heart of the matter. If you've been in the hospital as a cardiac patient, maybe you have a pacemaker or congestive heart failure or an arrhythmia, or perhaps you're a heart bypass patient, then consider Palm Garden as your rehab choice. With proven outcomes, second to none, Palm Garden fixes broken hearts. Call today at 854-6262. That's 854-6262. At Ameris Bank, we understand that there is no purchase more exciting than the purchase of a new home. We are dedicated to helping you find the mortgage that meets your needs and giving you the personal attention you deserve. Our mortgage options offer a variety of benefits, including up to 100% financing, down payment assistance, and expansive credit qualifications, all with the competitive rates and exceptional service. Call Ameris Bank today or visit AmerisBank.com to learn more. We look forward to serving you. Ameris Bank is an equal housing lender and member of FDIC, a loan subject to credit approval. All right, 19 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. 80 degrees, by the way, right now. There is still a 60% chance we'll see rain this afternoon, and um, we're not complaining. We kind of need the rain, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, we do. I love rain. Uh, Solange Ritchie is on the phone with us. She's been with us before. Her book is called The Burning Man. Solange, how many books have you written? Well, that's that's an interesting question. My, um, I have two books that have never been published that I call my closet books because they're literally sitting in the closet. Um, so those have never seen the light of day, but uh, Burning Man is my first to be published, 
And then, as I uh, previously mentioned, there are uh, books that are written behind it in the series that will be coming out. Can't wait for that. Yeah, I wanted to ask you something. Um, you, you, you've chosen to have your protagonist as a lady, and typically uh, in a lot of these stories, it's a, it, there's a guy in that position. So that adds a different dimension. But, but as far as the, the crime scenario... The, the I guess in the real world, tell me if I'm right or wrong about this. It seems like when I look at the news, the the victim is usually a woman. The the bad guy is usually a guy. And I'm not. I know it's not always the case, but that's typically the way it is in this world. Unfortunately, um, not that it would be better if it was the other way around. But in the stories, that does the fact that she, that Catherine is a uh, is a lady, d- does she handle these cases differently because the the victims are ladies? Um, you know, that's a really interesting question, and I think the answer to that is yes. Um, I think because not only is she a, a beautiful, a quite stunning woman... Um, Which is the part I like, by the way. <laughs> yes. there, was a, there was a bit of thought that went into that, too. But she, yes, she's quite stunning in a, in a natural way. And um, in addition to that, I think the fact that she's the mother of a child... Um, gives her this human quality when she's dealing with the victims, yeah. when she's dealing with the families, and that, I think that comes through pretty pretty clearly with her as a uh, as a, a physician and as a, a medical uh, medically trained person. Um, the fact that even though she's dealing with you know the most horrific types of death on a daily basis, she still feels very much for for these 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 girls mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who she always remembers are daughters, are sisters, are, you know, someone's aunt, someone's cousin, someone's relative. Right, right. And um, the most difficult part of her job is having to deliver the news to the family that, you know, your loved one is gone and we need you to come down and make an identification. Um, and I think, again, as far as a writer, I think that humanizes her. It makes her someone who is believable and honest Mm -hmm. and you know it gives her a level of integrity that i think the readers really respond to and your your stories i mean even though they're based on uh, actual cases you really make the reader feel involved and you don't uh, put up with any of that um uh politically correct nonsense that the people have to you know take these days no, no. I, I think as a as a writer, um, and especially in this genre, and especially when you're writing about serial killers, you, you have to be, you know, I would say you can't write rainbows and butterflies when you're doing a serial killer. You, no, have you to sure be. can't. And you brought it right home to to uh, to Catherine. Her son Joey is somehow affected by by the Burning Man, right? What what's can, yes. we don't want to tell too much. Yes. No. But what happens? I mean. Well, I would have been um, afraid as an author. I would have been afraid to write that. I would have said, "Oh gosh, I don't want to jinx my own." <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I would have been a little superstitious or something. Yeah, well, I, you know, I can kind of understand that. I mean, there's some, some rules with writers that um, I think are um, out there. I mean, there's always the thing about don't kill animals and don't, you know. But you know, as a writer, I think you have to trust your gut instinct. And with me, when I came up with Catherine's character. Um, I, I had to, you know, when you're, when you're writing, um, one of the things that you always hear at seminars is you have to make this high stakes. And I thought, well, what is more high stakes for a woman than their child being attacked or yeah, kidnapped really. or yeah. taken? And to me, even though I'm not a mother myself, that it would be the ultimate, you know, it would put me into overdrive mode. And I think for almost every woman out there, they would feel the same. So for me, those stakes were the ultimate stakes. And frankly, I think uh, any woman in the world would feel the same. So, you know, that makes the story universal. And, um, and it also makes the killer that much more diabolical because when you oh, target yeah. a child, yeah. you're targeting the, un- the ultimate innocent. And um, so I, I just had to do it. You know, I just had to go with my gut and say, you know, this is what I'm going to write. And uh, Catherine uh, herself is a uh, victim of uh, gender discrimination. And you personally know about that firsthand. Yes, yes. I, I have, um, 
as a trial, a female trial attorney, been uh, subjected to my share of you know, honey, deer. Uh, oh no! Oh my theory. gosh! Um, not not so much in the courtroom, although I have had some of it in the courtroom. Uh, more on a um, on a colleague to colleague level, and um, you know, I'm the kind of person I don't, I just don't put up with that. I don't. Uh, Did you give it back? Women. Uh, I made sure the person never called me that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just but curious yeah, how you did you that. Know, there, there are women that, that put up with those types of sexist remarks and, and think they have to go along with it to kind of play play with the boys, and I, I don't agree with that at all. I don't, like, you know, just call, call it out when it happens, and if it happens again, you just keep calling it out, and you just say, you know, I'm sorry, that's not appropriate. I'm your colleague. I'm on an equal footing with you. And I don't appreciate you calling me that. And if you should ever call me that again, I'll bring it to my superior's attention, and we'll deal with it that way. Mm, you know, wow. um, there, there are ways to to deal with that. And I, and I've worked on cases like that as well, where women have been, you know, demoralized in the workplace for speaking out. And I just don't um, I don't agree with it, and I won't put up with it. And I I hope that my readers will, will not put up with it either. No, it sounds like I, Catherine has a little bit of your spirit. Or a lot yes, of your spirit. Definitely. She does. She does. And I, you know, um, I know that this book is a little intense for young girls. But you know, if you're if you're out there and you're dealing with a, a bully or you're dealing with a situation where somebody is doing something to you that you don't appreciate, you know, definitely speak up. Um, your I, voice I get, is your voice. And if I could say this, I've worked with Robin forever, and uh, I've seen people do that to Robin, not me. Yeah. No, yeah. you don't do that. No, I don't do that. <laughs> no, but I've seen, and, and I see how Robin reacts. She's very gracious, and she just lets it slide. And, and I've often thought that a lot of times if it's an older guy, he probably means no harm. He's just, that's just the way he, he was brought up. But sometimes that's when right. it's, yeah. I don't know if you agree with that, but uh, sometimes when it's somebody her own age or even younger, then it becomes a little bit condescending or a lot condescending. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. I, when it happened to me, it was it was an older uh, an older gentleman, but he had worked with me long enough because he not only worked with me at my my um, position with my my ex husband, but he also worked with me prior. So he knew the type of personality I was, and it was just you know it was just off off the reservation. You yeah. Know? yeah. I, came out of nowhere well, and I was just like this is not cool so you know what we want really what we want in our protagonist we want a strong person and uh, and I, th I think that might be why uh, your character what, what kind of feedback are you getting from your fans they they love Catherine they want to see more of her they're inquisitive about her ESP they're inquisitive about, they want to know more about her background um, yeah, they, they absolutely love her, and it, it, she struck a chord, you know, which is wonderful as a writer to have that kind of feedback. Oh, yeah, you've hit a, you've hit a home run with that one. Uh, Solange Ritchie, thank you for being on the air with us. We've got a minute and a half. I want to make sure we give the information out about the book, plus I want to give the copy away that I have. If you get the copy I have, by the way, you can take it up to Gainesville on Saturday or Monday and get it signed by Solange. She's going to be in Gainesville at the Books A Million on West Newberry Road. I'm sure most of you know where that is. Um, and on Monday, sh and that'll be, I'm sorry, on Saturday, she'll be there at noon. On Monday, she'll be at the library, the, head the, the library headquarters building in Gainesville. Not the one in Ocala, the one in Gainesville. Mm -hmm. And that's on East University Avenue. And that'll be at um, 7 p.m. So you'll be there in the evening. Let me see if I can give away one of these books. Um, I mean, the one that I got. We only have one, right, Owen? Yes. Okay. Let me give away this one, and then we'll find out how to buy it. Good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? I have a question. I have a question about the veterans helping veterans. Did you say they were having an event today downtown? Ten o'clock. Yeah. Ten o'clock. Yeah. Because uh, uh, I thought it was downtown. It's it's the citizen cir circle. Citizen circle by Ocala, uh, by, by the city hall. City Hall. Thank yeah, you so yeah. behind City Hall. Yeah, okay, you got it. Half hour into it already. Yeah, it's already half hour into it. Uh, Solange, thank you so much for being on the air with us. What's your website? Oh, it's SolangeRitchie.com. S O L A N G E. My, Sorry. Yeah, and then my email, if anybody wants to email me to get a, um, a free copy of the second book to read it, to tell me their thoughts and insights, I'd love to have that too. So I'll give thank you my email as well. Okay, Solange, go ahead, real quick. Okay, it's SolangeRitchie at Hotmail.com. Easy enough. And we'll make sure we put that on the video that we just made. I put your cover of your book and the photograph I found of you. 
online on the video so you can see that. We'll take a little break. Be right back. Government official emphasized everything is on the table and they are tied in tight with French and Egyptian contacts who have the lead on the investigation. Fox's Catherine Herridge, the White House saying the president's directed administration officials to reach out to their international counterparts to offer support and assistance. Donald Trump tweeting out looks like yet another terrorist attack. Some positive news for the presumptive GOP presidential nominee in the latest Fox News poll. Trump has pulled into the lead nationwide against presumed Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton. Both candidates have popularity problems. Clinton more so than Trump. Fox's Carl Cameron. Fox News. We report. You decide. For me, it was the big S class from the 90s. Beautiful. My friend's dad had one. The SL. All of the SLs. 